I'm Silver. It is Monday, March 8th. I wanted to say a quick welcome back to you all returning viewers. If you did tune in last time and decided to come back, I really do appreciate it. I also wanted to say a quick hello to all new viewers. Thank you so much for joining in the dreamland. I am very social. You can actually find me uh, most on Discord as SilverD858. That's my direct messaging. And on Instagram as at Silver's Knitting. Um, and it's also actually on Twitter, but I don't usually use Twitter so much. Anyway, um, if you can kind of hear in the background, we do have a bunch of stuff going on. Um, you'll hear maybe through the window the um, guys actually working on something across the way. Um, I think they're paving somebody's driveway, whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> and you'll probably also hear when I move, this chair is so super squeaky. Anyway, um... Before I go on a bunch more rambling, uh, there's a lot I need to talk to you about this month, about, you know, 10 pages worth. So uh, please just grab your drink of choice, your crafting, and away we go. Um, today I'm actually drinking a uh, pumpkin spice coffee directly from Big Y. I believe it's their um, store brand. I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick drink and then we will get started. Hmm. Okay, maybe one more because you know me. <laughs> Mm, pumpkin spice. Anyway, in this episode, I do have FOs or finished objects. I do have whips or works in progress. We do have stash dash ready, basically where I show you what's ready for the summer along that I'm going to be participating in. I'll give more details as that gets closer. And X's and O's where I talk about any other crafting that I've done that is not uh, knitting or crochet. And then I do have Radio Gaga, Silver's Book Pile, Silver and the Case of the Screen Time. So respectively, that's what I'm listening to, what I'm reading, and what I'm watching. And then we have my favorite things. Basically, I talk to you anything that's come in the house, etc. The More You Know, where I talk about all the ministrati stuff and the end of the road. Okay, I'm going to go take a drink and then I will see you on the flip side. God, even that sounded pathetic to me. I'm just going to go get some more coffee. I'll see you in the next segment. Okay, let's talk foes or finished objects. I'm actually going to be including all the pattern names below each picture so you can see. The first one I'm going to talk about is what I call simply Hexy Blanket. These are basically five round hexy shapes that I've actually made 17 of them since the last time we talked. I'm just makes it like I said I'm making five round hexes just no real pattern. A lot of these actually all of these are miscellaneous fingering yarn scraps that I don't have the tags for anymore. I've been knitting for a while with fingering weight and I decided I needed to do something with like a scrappy project to, to get rid of the little you know the little bits and bobs that you have after every project. Um, Sorry, I don't remember all of them. There's some of them I might, but I make a lot of these. Um, I am using a size a, a USG hook, which is actually a 4.0 millimeter hook. The next thing I'm going to talk about is what I called cubed blanket. Again, this is also the same uh, fingering yarn scraps, just using them up. Um, and like, again, I don't have the tags anymore. I actually made a total of 45 um, five round squares for this cubed blanket. Uh, I am using a size USG hook, which is a 4.0 millimeter. The same hook, yeah. <laughs> the next thing that I actually finished was what I called a February 2021 DVD socks. I used the toe-up socks with a different pattern by Wendy D. Johnson. I ended up using Desert Vista Diary's uh, Viso base or sock base in the Sonoran Sunrise colorway absolutely love this colorway. I believe I got this colorway as a prize for putting in 12 pairs of Desert Vista socks throughout the course of last year. Or was it 2019? I can't remember. And I used a size US1, which is 2.25 millimeter on nine inch circulars. And the last FO I want to talk to you about is what I called doctored hat. I ended up using the sock head hat by Kelly McClure as well as Apple Tree Knits um, in their Pearl Jams Lux space, which is ooh, very super soft and cashmere and oh, a little bit of satin. Oh. In the Doctor Who colorway, 
hence the name. For this project, I did end up using a size US 3, which is actually a 3.0 millimeter. And then up until about the third or fourth round of decreases, and then I actually used a pair of my rainbow DPMs also in the same size. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next segment. All right, let's talk whips or works in progress. I have worked on a few things since the last time we talked, like actively worked on. The first one I want to talk to you about is what I call the fire viajante. I do have an entire video of this entire shawl. I'm going to put it after I talk about the details of the shawl so that way you know. <laughs> and you're not like expecting it. You know. And so that way you're, you know it's there. The pattern I used on this one is the Viajanche by Martina Bam. I've been working on this probably for over a year or so. I'm hoping, hoping to finish this for Stash Josh this year. We shall see. I have been using Apple Tree Knits plush fingering. Um, honestly, it says fingering, but it's really lace weight. In the Firefly gradient, the Tangled gradient, and the Hamilton gradient. I love it in exactly that order. <laughs> So it does change colors and it's awesome. I actually did a fade between each of these gradients and I think it came out mwah, chef's kiss. So good. Um, I know I'm patting myself on the back, but you'll see when I show you the video. I am actually for this one have been using a size US2, which is a 2.75 millimeter carbons 40 inch circulars for the needles. And it's pretty scrunched up on there right now. So it's kind of hard to show besides if I were to obviously, put in this video. See the y'all. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk to you about is what I call the Christmas Eve shawl. The pattern that I used on this one was the Quick and Simple Granny Shawl by Hannah Howens. I am using miscellaneous uh, fingering yarn scraps from other projects. This is literally what is left over from each color after I make the large amount of hexes. Um, I don't have labels for anything. Again, like, you know, the hexy project. Um, and usually each one is under two grams each. I basically will use the remainder from that project and just put it in a row, maybe half a row <laughs> in a... I've actually made a magic knot ball and once a month I'll put it all together and work on this project. Hence the pro pro has the progress you see. On this one, again, I am actually using a size USG, which is actually a 4.0 millimeter. The next thing that I want to talk about is what I called the Doctor in Snickered. This is actually a new project since the last time you've seen it. Um, <laughs> I've actually gotten to the first couple rows of the gusset um, for sock. So um, the pattern on this one is Double Snare by Erica Luter. It's been on my queue for quite a while. I wanted to get uh, a little bit of distance on this if I could this month. Um, the yarn that I'm using on this one is Pandia's Jewels on the Snug Base and the colorway is called, but I think it came out more magician. Hence the name the doctor ensnared. <laughs> I know, I'm patting myself on the back for all the crazy, crazy names I can come up with with a yarn and pattern combo, right? Either way, um, I'm actually using a size US 1.5, which is actually a 2.5 millimeter needle. Actually, they are on nine inch circulars at the moment. <laughs> this project is actually being housed in my Doctor Who patchwork bag by the Knitted Broomstick. Absolutely love this bag, guys. <laughs> The next thing that actually is new since the last time you've seen it is what I called simply Hat 2. It's actually for a surprised recipient. I don't believe they watched the podcast, but just in case, I won't say. Um, the pattern I'm using on this one was the Sockhead Hat by Kelly McClure. I am about three or four rows from the ribbing. Um, like the last hat, I did just over three and a half inches of ribbing and then from there. Uh, I am actually using the remainder of a colorway. The yarn that I'm using on this project is Leaning Men Fiber Arts in the Just Peachy colorway. I absolutely love this colorway, you guys, and I think the recipient will as well. I am using a size US3, which is actually a 3.0 millimeter on uh, 19, uh, 
16 inch sharks. And then once I get down to the crown decreases, I'll have to go down to my DPNs again. This is actually being housed in my sheep bag by Silver Shed USA. The bag, guys, it gives me a smile every time I see it. <laughs> uh, the next thing that I have been working on a lot is another new project. It's what I called It's Just Blue. <laughs> Uh, there is no pattern for this project. I'm actually just making a granny square up as big as I possibly can. And basically until I run out of yarn or I deem that it's large enough for a bed blanket for a surprise recipient. They also don't think they listen to the podcast, but just in case I won't mention who it's for. Um, I'm actually using random blues and greens from Red Heart. Um, just little balls that I've had hanging around in my stash for a while and decided that I needed to make it. Um, I'm going from the lightest of the greens and blues up to the darkest of those colors. I'm actually using a size K or a 10 and a half hook, which is actually a 6.5 millimeter hook. I absolutely love it. Wow. Love this hook. Had it for a while and I'm glad to be working with it again. Um, this whole project is actually being housed directly in my Geeky Girls uh, knit black and pink bag that I actually got for one of their anniversary kits. I think it was a couple years ago. I don't remember how long I've had this bag, but I try to find as many projects to use in it as I possibly can. It's traveled many, many places with me <laughs> since I got it. Anyway, um, the next thing that I want to talk to you about and that I've worked on is another new project. I literally cast this on two days ago at this point, maybe one, I don't remember. Anyway, it's the March 2021 DVD socks. Um, if you're wondering, the reason I keep delaying um, doing the cast on for the socks is because I want to try to do a tutorial for a toe up sock pattern um like the toe up socks are the difference by one dv johnson that i personally use for both myself just if i don't feel like thinking at all um, mostly because the gusset it's really fast and i've got it memorized um but basically uh if anyone's interested in the tutorial please let me know it might actually encourage me to get going on it um but yeah basically that's why I have delayed the casting on the past couple months because I've been trying to convince myself that maybe I should put up this tutorial. So we'll see, right? Either way, I'm actually using also again Desert Vista on um, the Viso or Sock Base in the Neon Cotton Candy colorway. I'm actually looking and working on it right now. I have gotten to about 20 rows on the foot, so not very far, but I love the way it's knitting up. It's actually not a stripey sequence. It's actually somewhat variegated. So it is definitely um, changing up between the blues and the purples and the pinks and the yellows. And oh, I love this. It literally looks like um, the bottom of the cotton candy thing. If you've ever worked at a carnival, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm actually knitting this on a US 1, which is actually a 2.25 millimeter on nine inch circulars. Once I get to the heel turn, I will be switching over to the two 16 inch circular method as my, um, the way that I purl is <laughs> somewhat, I need more room essentially. I, can't really do that very well on the nine inch circulars for some reason. Anyway, I've actually been housing this in my exploding TARDIS bag by Substitch Studios. Oh, anyway, uh, before I go ahead and ramble anymore, I'm going to move on to the next segment. Okay. Let's talk about what I have ready for Stash Dash this year. Um, if you need a reminder, Stash Dash is the along that the Nick Girls actually do during the middle of the summer, usually starting midway through May. I don't know the exact dates so far this year, but usually in about January, maybe early March, I do start um, getting my projects ready to go for a stash dash so all I have to do is maybe like one row um and then the bind off or like one repeat and then the bind off that kind of thing um I have actually gotten to that point on three different projects since the last time we talked I'm surprised it's that many let's be completely honest about that 
Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is what I called Peacock Shawl 2.0. This has gotten and not as much uh, not as much distance as it did the last time you saw it. Well, mostly because obviously there are 800, almost 900 some odd stitches in the shawl. Um, the pattern is the Peacock Shawl by Emily Walton. I've actually gotten, sorry, I've gotten to the last row and then there's literally a bind off. The bind off will probably take me two days, but we'll see. We'll see. Because <laughs> there are literally 900 and... 40 stitches I think I counted <laughs> on the shawl itself. Um, I have been using a few different colorways. The first one is the from Nice and Knit uh, on, the on their fingering base called Back Bay. Um, another colorway called Seaside. I do have a random red in there. I don't know the exact name of it. Um, but I also do have a red from Shibi Time Knits on their All Your Base colorway called Ruby Slippers. And then I also do have the Leading Med Fiber Arts Showcase on the in the Just Peachy colorway. So I have a lot of this colorway. I Like I said, I ripped out a sweater a little while ago, a couple months ago at this point, I think, to be able to use a majority of it for this shawl. Let's be completely honest, that's what it was for. <laughs> Anyway, I um, actually got this on a size US 6, which is actually, um, sorry, I have this on a US 6 uh, on a 16 inch Chaiku red lace needle set that I have and I absolutely love. The shawl itself is so, so scrunched up on the needles. It is hard to get a good picture, so I'm hoping these two pictures that show as I'm talking will kind of show you the progress I've made. I'm always worried about that. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. Um, the next thing that I have gotten to the stash dash uh, finale, I guess you can say, or finishing line, is what I called Sugar Skull Socks. This is the Sugar Skull Sock pattern. It's basically a vanilla sock pattern to show off the sugar shells that are sugar skulls that are um, the designer's plan or the yarn dyer's plan. Um, I actually did change the heel to a slip stitch heel as opposed to the short row heel, yeah, just because I wanted to. Um, I have gotten to the end of the foot of both of these socks. So all I have to do is put in the toe and eventually kitchen the socks together. Um, like I mentioned, the yarn itself is actually called Sugar Skulls by Artistic Yarn by Abby. I bought this, oh geez, like several years ago. I don't remember how long ago. Um, <laughs> anyway, I am using a size 2, which is actually a 2.75 millimeter on 9 inch circulars for the entire socks. Oh, once I got to the heel, I did change over to DPNs. But I may also use 16 inch circulars for the toe because, um, yeah, it's just easier that way. Anyway, um, <laughs> the third thing that is ready for Stash Dash now is what I called Hello Sweetie Socks. This is the Spoilers Socks by CC Almond. The yarn I'm using on this one is Into the World, spelled W H I R L D, which is a. Um, uh, a spinning term, uh, sorry, <laughs> on the Paku sock base. The colorway is bigger on the inside. And the size U is one and a half, which is at 2.5 millimeter nine inch circulars. I did use two 16 inch circulars for the toes and the heel and the cuff as well. Actually, no, I lied, just for the toe. Sorry, I got a little bit distracted. Um, MTI has a couple errands to run, so you probably heard the garage, if not. <laughs> Well, now you know I was distracted. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and get a drink and I will see you in the next segment. X's and O's. All right, this month, honestly, I didn't do a lot of work on my cross stitch. The uh, in this house dot 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 Doctor Who by Stitch area. Um, like I said, I'm going to mention her Etsy. Sh I'm gonna, sorry, I'm going to be including her Etsy shop below and in the show notes as well. Um, so you can see the genius that is Stitch area. <laughs> Let me tell you. But I did manage to finish filling in the Tardis from the last time. I'm going to show you before and after photos as well. Um. Sorry, allergies again. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
processing. Oh, right. And um, afterward, I did put in a few words, um, but not much. I've been mostly concentrating on finishing things um, in my knitting world. Anyway, uh, before I really start rambling, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next segment. Radio Gaga. All right, y'all. This month I have been listening to a few, I think a few more podcasts than I had the month before. So that's pretty good, right? I found a couple new ones. <laughs> As always, I've actually been listening to My Favorite Murder, The Murder Squad, Wine and Crime, and That's Why We Drink, and Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. Unfortunately, the last episode I'm listening of theirs came out Thursday. So sorry, Vanessa. Sorry, Casper. I'll, um, I'll talk about that if anyone wants to know, uh, in a future episode, or actually in a future se in a, wow, I'll be talking about the reason for that in a future segment. And I also found Unraveled, which is a seven-part docu-series, I guess you can say, of the Long Island serial killer and that particular, um, investigation and how it was messed up from the very beginning and things like that. So much. Two investigative reporters, I mean... Billy's, Billy, my dude Billy is in it, so I had to listen, right? Um, the other thing I did find this month that I've actually been meaning to listen to, uh, probably since it began back in December, is Tenfold More Wicked. This one also goes through, well, their first season goes through one particular, um, Family Annihilator series guy, and I'm like, oh. I can't even, and like how the investigation was boned from the beginning and stuff like that. <sighs> anyway, uh, I hope to get back to that soon. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next segment before I start rambling again. And I also need to go get more coffee. Silver's Book Pile. Are right, you guys, I have finished and been reading quite a bit since the last time we talked. Um, just so you know, if you would like, you can definitely follow me on Goodreads. I'm actually Silver Luna there as well. And I'll have a list of all of the reviews and everything else that I talk about um, directly. Um, right now, it's just a list of everything, um, not how I felt about each book. Uh, eventually, I do want to do a booktube, but right now... It's just not in schedule. Sorry. Anyway, uh, I actually finished a total of 14 books since the last time we talked. Um, a book called Before She Was Mine by Amelia Wilde. I also had Just a Taste by Crystal Caswell. I have Crowned Jewels by Ella James. Then You Kissed Me by Willow Winters. Also The Mistletoe Game by Ellis O'Day. Man on Top by Lauren Lynn Page. Naughty Wish by J.X. Sorry. J.H. Crocs. Cruz. Crocs. I'll just say J.H. Crocs. Delicate Ink by Carrie Ann Ryan. Also have Control Us by J.M. Walker. Loving an Alpha Billionaire by Viola Black. Also I finished, finally, this week, uh, this past week actually, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by J.K. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I also finished Men of Ink, which is a series by Chanel Blitz. Blitz is actually one book, but it actually was a series. I also finished reading Kiss of a Dragon by Alyssa Woods. And I think a day ago, I just finished Reaper's Rise by K.L. Savage. And as to what I've been currently reading, I'm actually in the middle of Chapter 3 of A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I don't really read this very often, but I probably should, seeing as, well, Season 2 is just about done and they have wrapped up Season 3 of uh, recording everything. So... I'm hoping to remind myself of what happened. Anyway, I've also been listening to Dragonfly and Ember um, by Diana Gabaldon. This is going to take me a bit, mostly because, yeah. Um, I've also been listening to 16 Lighthouse Road by Debbie Maycomer. So basically, I'm splitting my time between the two of them, which I don't know if it's very smart of me, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Uh, another book, but I kind of take my time reading through, is A Rule of Murder by Louise Penny. Uh, I think I'm in chapter three of that one as well. Uh, mostly I read that if it's like, you know, not right before midnight. 
and I'm not wanting fluff. Anyway, uh, before I go ahead and, well, before I go and rant anymore, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next segment. Silver and the case of the screen time. Okay, guys, I have to be honest, uh, besides this, uh, <laughs> sorry, between all of the hexes that I made, that I can pretty much call a hexy parade. Um, <laughs> I have actually been spending a lot of time in front of the boob tube, so to speak, in front of the electronic babysitters this month, just because that's where my head has been at. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time <laughs> doing anything else, but that's another story altogether. Um, in terms of TV, I have actually watched 911, 911 Lone Star, Prodigal Son, Masked Dancer, actually Nancy Drew, Discovery Witches, and Doctor Who. Um, I spent a lot of time with Doctor Who, but I'll tell you why in a sec. Um, in terms of movies that I've watched, I have watched Goosebumps, um, Sonic the Hedgehog, Magic Mike, Magic Mike XXL, Step Up. I think there were another couple movies in there, but I don't remember. It's... <laughs> It's mostly been a TV show and YouTube and podcast kind of month for me. Oh yeah, speaking of podcasts, I have actually watched Adore Knit, The Knit Girls, Stuck Knit Zombies, Stitching the High Notes, Two Martini Stitcher, Knit and Kins, uh, Crazy Sock Lady, and Criminally Creative actually had an episode, so that was cool. Um, so you know, I am actually going to link everything that I talk about in all of my show notes um, across the board, both on Discord. I'm also going to be putting it directly on the underneath the video as well on the soul list of podcasters that I mentioned and the bag makers, etc. So that way you can check them out if you so choose. <laughs> um, uh, yes, and like I mentioned before, I have been pretty much sitting in front of my computer on YouTube a lot. I have been watching a few YouTube channels on Seska Says, who does like Supernatural, Doctor Who, and even Good Omens um, reactions. I've actually been watching all of those that I mentioned. Um, I've also been watching Charlotte, Charlotte Dobre, also Camelot 331, Officer Paw Patrol, um, Top 10 Central, Top 10 Behind the Screen, uh, The Matthews Fam, um, Guitar underscore Night 14, also r slash Mr. Reddit. Um, his podcast, not the individual little videos. Um, I've also been watching Inform o Overload. I found a, uh, I found actually a channel called uh, Natalie Lawyer Chick, who talks about different cases and things that came up in the uh, criminal justice system. It's actually currently happening right now, um, and basically uh, her reaction to these different cases. Um, They've been pretty interesting, to be honest. Um, I've also been watching a channel called Devin Siebold for quite a while now. I actually finally subscribed to him this, mo uh, this month. Um, he does a lot of um, skits that have to do with um, different, like, things that teachers go through, especially with, like, Zoom calls and stuff. I just find it entirely funny. Um, I've also been watching uh, Who Culture and what, what Culture, basically going over different, um, like, top tens and things like that. Um, I've also been watch. I also watched a few episodes, a few, a few videos, sorry, from Eamon House Son, as well as Alonzo Laroni. Um, Alonzo does a lot of, like, okay, you're not grammatically correct, but still, it's kind of funny <laughs> videos. Yeah. Okay, now here's the category that MPI never agrees with me. Um, I basically just call it my other YouTube stuff category. It includes like the different craft video channels that I watch. Crash, sorry, crash videos that I watch. Don't know why. Those are the, those are the channels that I tend to only watch maybe once every couple of days. Um, they remind me to be <laughs> easier on the road. Also, for some reason... They help with my anxiety, especially I found during this pandemic. It is the only thing that can calm down my anxiety. You would think crash videos, not so much. Whatever. Anyway, and also mixed in this category, I do include like pet videos that I watch all the time, like dance videos, some X Factor, BGT, AGT, 
all those like flooding flight attendants and air controller videos. Um, I don't remember these the channels that those were on, but there they are. Um, the ones that I do remember um, include DDS TV, Dash Cam Lessons, RR and BD Driving School, also Mega Driving School, King of the Road, and Sergi 322. Those are the ones that I kind of have actually subscribed to. So anyway, uh, that is a lot that has actually kept me in front of the electronic babysitter this month. Um, I'm gonna actually gonna go get some more coffee and then I will see you in the next segment. Okay, let's talk my favorite things. I have actually had three things come in the mail um, since the last time we talked actually. Four was, the fourth one was actually for MTI. It was actually a uh, nice little gift from uh, our my sister on Will Mercury and her husband Lag. Um, he loves it. He really loved it. Although it wasn't the right one for him. Uh, I don't really know what it's called. It's for something that he can use to stream. Um, but anyway, um, <laughs> the thing that actually came in for the first thing that came in for me specifically was from Fully Spun Yarns um, at fullyspun.com. Like I said, I'm going to link everything below and in the show notes as well. The two colorways that showed up for that showed up in the mail. Uh, the first one is called Intersex Pride on Postscript Fingering. And the second is called Gender Queer Pride on Post Script Fingering. Um, both Mercury and I are going to be using that for a, a long coming up in the future. Um, I'll give more details when I have some. <laughs> the next thing that came in the mail was actually the first of two intended shipments from Desert Vista Dye Works. Um, the, for the first, this. The shipment did have the my year-long prize from last year. It's a prize game that I got basically for entering in 12 pairs of socks, um, one per month throughout the course of last year. The colorway that they came up with was called Someday. I absolutely, I absolutely love this colorway, you guys. I actually was thinking about, you know, while I was delaying <laughs> for the, uh, for the, 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 the video I was planning on making for the toe ups socks, I was actually debating whether or not to use the Sunday or the colorway that I chose with the cotton candy. So <laughs> anyway, like I said, love the color. The next thing that came in the shipment was actually a colorway that I chose for myself called Abrace Yourself. Uh, this is basically for putting in 100 plus posts on the on my Instagram feed using my hashtag. Um, if you want to follow this year's hashtag, it's hashtag Silverluna21, uh, wait, sorry, it's hashtag DVD Instagram Silverluna2112. I basically will put in pictures of all my socks for this year. Anyway, um, what was also included in the shipment was actually two sets of minis. Oh, I absolutely love the way that these are, they play together. Um, I have actually decided to put this into like all of these minis into my blanket um, that I'll talk about some other time, um, but as a rainbow. So it looks amazing so far. I've done a lot of work on that. Um, also, there was a pin in that shipment as well as a velvet case. I absolutely love that. Yeah. Uh, the last thing that actually came in the mail for me uh, was basically we had to order some screws for the desk that I am now sitting at to be able to use said desk. Um, we had to buy them from Amazon and they got here. Oof. Got basically, yeah, we got some screws so I can finish building my new desk. Honestly, this actually leads into some real talk slash not so great events that happened this, this month. So I'm going to go ahead and just talk about that now quickly. Um, MT and I have been slowly working toward organizing our house. Um, we have noticed during the pandemic that we are, well, we're slobs, we're not adults, you know. Um, to be able to get that going, we both feel like we need to let my half OCD kick in and 
organize the place so we have places to put things. Um, we honestly have started with the media room because it is the room in the house where it has my stash. It has all of his gaming systems and everything else. Um, just, yeah. <laughs> We wanted to, to make sure that this is our office space and like where I may or I'm going to be doing hopefully all future recordings um, and also a place where he can come in and do his interviews and do his work when he finally gets, you know, going on work and stuff like that. Um, anyway, I started to put together this corner desk that my brother gave me um, back a couple months ago when he and his partner were moving. And uh, yeah, we just realized... <laughs> Oh, right. We were missing a few screws to finish putting this all together. Honestly, he, like I said, he gave us the desk and honestly, there's no way to figure out where all these screws went to and we had to order more. Um, basically before the screws came in, I had put together my cubbies where I put all my yarn. Um, and I'll, I'll actually put in videos at the end so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I pretty much documented everything from this whole thing <laughs> um basically like I said I had already put them all together and um honestly I was trying to put the desk together uh most everything in the cubbies pretty much fell on my head and all over the floor all over the media room honestly it made me so upset to say the very least like I said I'm going to include a uh, video and some pictures that I took just after it happened honestly <laughs> Um, I did lose a couple days worth of work because, you know, me and organization, it's just, I'm very picky. Anyway, I can laugh and like joke now, but at the time I was so, so mad and so PO'd. Like I said, I lost a day full of work, a lot of arguing with MTI, trying to figure out where things go, you know, like that whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put in all of those videos here and I will see you in the next segment. Oh, and a quick note before I actually move on to the next segment. Uh, I will also put a timestamp so if you're not interested in my rambling or if you have little ones about and you don't like swearing, you can always skip on to the next segment. Um, the timestamp will be down below this video. Anyway, I will see you in the next segment, for real this time. Fucker! Like, seriously! <sighs> Hold on, I need to figure this. I'm gonna flip the phone around now. Shit on the floor here! Like, seriously! Fucking all this was fucking put away over here. I had my tower sit back up again. I had... God. All because... I didn't want to wait two days for a freaking package to arrive with screws to finish the desk. But now that I have the desk finished, of course, all this has to topple down pretty much on my fucking head. And like, look, like, I don't even, this was a day and a half, almost two days fucking worth of work. It's hey fuck. You could tell in my, the tone of my voice, by the tone of my voice, I am fucking pissed. <sighs> Empty, I better get home from his meeting soon because I, I, I'm going to need hugs. And of course, the cat won't go anywhere near me. <laughs> you can't even see. He's hiding on the stairs because he knows I'm upset. Anyway, this is the saga that is my crafting corner now. But at the very least, I have whips um, right now. I have my desk kind of loaded on with all my scrapbooking supplies that I was yet to put away. That was me. That wasn't anything falling down. <laughs> I promise. But like, all of this was up top. I'm like, alright. I need to find some fucking Gorilla Glue for this shit, I think. To get you see those little lobbies? They're supposed to hold all that together. I don't know, unless maybe I tried to overload it too much. But to be fair, though, I was trying to force the screws on the end of this thing. Here, let me get closer. Because the um, table didn't want to line up right, so I had to, like, torque it a little bit. It's Ikea furniture, yo. Anyway, I don't know. I like the way the desk looks. So hopefully, I'll be having a podcast from here soon. That's the only upside. I mean, that's why 
I'm as relatively calm as I am, otherwise I'd be blowing a fucking gasket. In good news, it is snowing out there. Okay, I'm back to try to put it back together. Wish me luck. The more you know. Okay, a random uh, announcement, actually, a little bit of minimum strategy before I go ahead and move on to the alongs. I have actually put up a poll on Discord, actually, and even on the Facebook group. I just want to know what your favorite Halloween or scary movies are. Um, just You can either comment either on Discord or on Facebook or even below this video. I would really like to know. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about <laughs> why I want that. Uh, I would say in a couple of months. It's something that I'm working on in the background. In the background here. It's Shay Silver here. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to a cow breakdown. The first one that I want to talk about is simply the Stripe Along 2021. A little bit of backstory. At some point last year, I had realized that I was back down to three more skeins of Desert Vista Dye Works Stripey Yarn as I basically have enough stripey yarn to get me through an entire year if I continue knitting a pair of socks a month. I've actually decided to start along for those who like stripes of any kind, like any kind, <laughs> color blocking, things like that. Like I mentioned, this along will actually run all year on all social medias across the board. I'm using hashtag SDL stripe along 2021. I'm gonna put it down below. Because I know I talk fast. <laughs> the rules for this are relatively simple. Um, anything that you finish in 2029, sorry, anything you finish in 2021 with stripes will count. You must either be a member of the Silver's Dream and Discord or Facebook groups. If you don't use either, um, you can go ahead and enter either way. Just please make sure you use the hashtag or even at me. On Instagram, I am at Silver's Treats. Um, this way, I know to actually count your projects for this along. Uh, you, and it's, you know, color work, fair isle, stranded color work, double knitting, intarsia, color blocking, things like that. They all count as long as you can use colors that are nice, bright, and cheerful. Because we need that after last year, right? <laughs> Uh, a few notes for this along, you can actually enter your project multiple times. Uh, like I said, there's no need to go ahead and enter the FO multiple times as long as you actually notate in the post and that you're mentioning me on. Just basically took me, you know, how long it took you to complete each project. I will comment for you the correct post numbers. All right, if you have actually finished and started the project any time in the year of 2021, you can actually enter your FOs two times. If you actually finish the project and start it actually in the same six month time frame, you can get three total times entered. And now if you started and finished the project in a three month time period, you can actually enter your FOs four times. If you started and finished it within a two month time frame, you can enter a total of five times. Now, here's the kicker. If you actually are like me and you can do a pair of socks in one month's time from start to finish, you can actually actually enter your FOs six total times, which is amazing. I, I don't know. I like that idea <laughs> of getting more entries for the faster, faster that you can knit the socks or whatever you're working on. Okay. What you're here for, right? The prizes. Well, we do have a digital prize that was offered by at Pat, or who is also known as a Looney Hiker over on Ravelry and on Discord. Um, she has actually offered one of her lovely patterns. You can actually look at all of her patterns on Lovecraft or even on Ravelry. Links will actually be in the show notes on Discord, in the box below, and even on our show notes at www.silverstreamend.com. Now, as to physical prizes, so far we do have a prize we have a skein of yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners in the Fairy Lights colorway. And there's also a pattern that goes with it as well as a physical pattern. Oh, I love this combo, you guys. Now, for if anyone, if there's anyone out there that wants to go ahead and donate any prizes, please just PM me on Discord. Uh, like I said, I am SilverD, hashtag 8858 
Um, I'm also on Facebook. You can PM me there as well. Or if you'd like to skip all that on social media, you can go ahead and email me directly at silverstreetmed at gmail.com. Like I said, I do have a few more prizes in mind as of right now, but I haven't really decided as to when I'm going to announce them as they're pretty much grand prizes. So, um, and I, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um, keep in touch on that one. <laughs> Who has finished projects in February? Well, there were a few. Emily R. I now our Elle McCall, meditative crafter, Pat, also known as Looney Hiker, as well as VT Kimmy Kim. So congratulations everyone for putting their FOs in last month. Oh, I loved seeing them all come in. Oh. Oh, um, a quick minder, reminder, um, please just make sure you come by either on Facebook or on the Discord board and even on uh, Instagram and like your favorite FOs from the past month. I like to see everyone sharing the love. <laughs> okay, let's talk Dream Along 2021. Now, as with most of the world, I was honestly, I was dreaming of saying goodbye to 2020 something fierce by about November... Well, maybe even October, um, basically in an effort to literally dream 2020 away, I thought to host a new along in 2021 where I finally either cast on projects that I've been dreaming about starting or finishing things that I have like had in my UFO bin for forever and have been like quite literally dreaming about finishing, um, things that have been on the pro in progress for a while. Um, to this end, the Dream Along 2021 was born. Um, like I mentioned, this is going to be running all year long. I'm going to be using hashtag SDL Dreamer Along 2021 on all social media so you know. Um, I will go ahead and put that down below so you can see it. I know I'm talking fast. <laughs> the coffee is finally kicking in, y'all. <laughs> The rules for this along are simple. Basically, anything you finish in 2021 will count. You must also be, you must be a member of the Silver's Dreamland Discord or Facebook groups. Honestly, if you don't use either, you can make sure you use the hashtag that I mentioned before, and you can even at me on Instagram. I am at Silver Streets again. Um, this way, I know to count your pro your projects for this along as well. I actually have been taking everybody's projects and moving them into the Discord board, regardless of whether you do it on Facebook or not. That way, it's all in one place, and we can heart and things like that. So. <laughs> Basically, like I said, uh, the main idea that I had for this along is to start and finish things that have been basically been in your queue, like I said, whether as a UFO or unfinished object or basically things you have been dreaming of making for years and just have not gotten up the gumption to do so. When I say in your queue, I mean to work on or have been working on but finally wanting to finish it, that kind of thing. Um, Basically, I'm looking at you, Even Star. That project has been in my mental queue to work on since I joined Ravelry. And I saw, I think, on the Knit, More, the Knit Girls a while ago. Um, just haven't really worked on it. Anyway, basically, like I mentioned, anything you finish in 2021 will count for this along. Um, a few notes for this along. You can actually enter your project multiple times. This is actually based on the length of time the project has been in your either your mental queue or even your physical queue on Ravelry. Um, there is no need to enter each FO multiple times. Like I mentioned, um, I will... basically as long as you notate how long it's actually been marinating or being or been around, I actually will comment with the correct post numbers for you. So your entry numbers. If you have started or even had had this in your queue more than a year, you actually may enter it two times. If you've had it actually in your queue for more than two years, you actually may enter it three times. If you actually started, if it's actually been three years, you actually may enter your FO four total times. If you've actually had, you know, this in your queue more than four years, you can actually can enter five times. If you've actually had this in your queue about five years or more, you can actually enter six times. All right. Now, finally, if you've actually started or had this in your queue more than 10 years, which honestly is longer than I was ever on Ravelry, you actually may enter your FOs 10 total times, you guys. 10 total times. What? Okay. What you're here for, right? The prizes. 
we do have two physical prizes as of right now. We do have the Starry Night Colorway by West Yorkshire Spinners, and there's actually a, a corresponding physical pattern for that. I am also going to be throwing in the Louette Sonics Circular Needles. It's a size US 5, which is actually a 3.75 millimeter on 24 inch circulars. If anyone wishes, again, to donate any prizes, please just message me on Discord. I am actually SilverD, hashtag 8858, on Facebook, uh, SilverD there. Or you can actually email me directly at silversdreamand at gmail.com. I do, like I mentioned before, I do have a few more prizes in mind as of right now, but I haven't completely decided as to when I'm going to announce them, so keep, keep an eye out. <laughs> All right, who entered FOs in February? Well, Emily R, I now our, Linda C, Linda E, also have Meditative Crafter, Nicole S, and BT Kimmy Kim. So congratulations everyone who entered FOs. I loved seeing them all come by. Oh, uh, yes, and a quick reminder, please make sure you come by either on Facebook or Discord or even on so and social media like Instagram. You can come by and like your favorite FOs from the past month. I like to see I like to see what you're what you're liking. Um I'm, there might be prizes down the line I don't know yet. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go take a drink. Um take a quick break before I move on to the next segment. Okay, we have come to the end of the road. I am pretty social. You can actually find me on our Discord board, which is Silver's Dream Man Podcast. I'll put a link in the show notes down below. Um, just be aware that link will last today. Um, if you do need to go ahead and find it, it is searchable. On Discord, I am actually Silver D hashtag 8858 there. On Discord, Silver's Dream Man can actually be found at www.facebook.com backslash groups backslash <laughs> Silver's Dream Man Podcast. Yes, I know when you do a search for Silver's Dream Man Podcast, there's actually two different that come up, um, a group and a page. If you follow the group for all episodes and along updates, that's actually where that will be. Um, a note about the Facebook group, so you know. You do need to enter three questions, as I am trying to keep spammers out of the group. Um, first question, what episode am I up to? Well, today is actually episode 102. The second question is, what is the name of Silver Sun? Uh, Mario the Cat slash Mario. Um, if, you, uh, if, if you enter, put in uh, MDI, that's actually the funny answer, so yay. All right, so if you don't know these answers, that's fine. Um, just note this in your answers. Chances are you'll still be in, uh, let in, no problem. Just be aware, um, I do need you to read the group rules and hit agree. The rules are really simple and absolute, basically, in my eyes, um, especially when you answer the list of questions. Um, you just have to agree to be nice and dox people, etc. You know, how that goes. Um, all right, so you know, uh, when the episodes go live, the notifications may also bounce onto the Silver Stream Man page as well, um, but they should also go into the group. Now, on Instagram and on Twitter, I am at Silver's Knitting. I do tend to run through all messages as soon as poss I possibly can. Um, if you don't hear from me within 24 hours, please feel free to go ahead and email me directly at silverstreamman at gmail.com as this actually bounces right into my phone and make sure that I actually respond to you. And as always, everything that I do talk about actually can be found directly on the show notes at www.silverstreammanpodcast.com. If you haven't done so already, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe here and you can hit the, the bell down below. This way others can find me in my cor little corner of YouTube. That and when you hit the bell, you actually will get notifications when I post my videos. Okay. I have rambled for long enough. I know your time is valuable. Please feel free to join in any discussions or you can even start your own directly on the Silver's Dreamland Discord board or even the Facebook groups. I don't bite, I promise. If you are feeling generous, please click that like button below this video. It really does help out my channel. That it makes me smile. <laughs> actually, anyone that you put a like on their video actually makes them smile if I'm being honest. But anyway, please stay tuned for episode 103 next month. Until next time, happy crafting!
How many times are you going to open up the motherfucking garage door, boo? Like, seriously. I don't even know if you can hear it when it happens, but he actually opened it once, obviously, to leave, closed it, realized he forgot something, then opened it up again, closed it so that he can come in the house, and then he's got to deal with the cat because the cat wants to go in the garage as soon as you come back in the house. And then he has to open it and close it again. And just like, okay, so you forgot things twice? <laughs> okay, rant over. <laughs> Let's actually move on to the next segment now. I'm just using this for the blooper reel if you're wondering. I wanted to let you know. 